Since 1988, tourism to Alaska began to increase, with many cruise ships stopping at Skagway. The rails of the White Pass and Yukon route were laid right down to the docks. We joined the train with just a short walk from the Volendam and settled into our carriage for the next three hours. The line was born during the Klondike Gold Rush of 1897. It was the most popular but treacherous route taken by prospectors to the gold fields in Dawson City, across the mountains to the Canadian border at the summit of White Pass. The two men responsible for the construction of the railroad were Sir Thomas Tancred, a financier from London, and Michael J. Henney an experienced railroad contractor. Give me enough dynamite and snooze, he bragged, and I'll build a railroad to hell. Building the 110 miles of track was a challenge in every way. Construction required cliff-hanging turns of 16 degrees, building two tunnels and numerous bridges and trestles. Work on the tunnel at 16 mile took place in the dead of winter, with heavy snow and temperatures as low as 60 degrees below. The workers reached the summit of White Pass on February the 20th, 1899. George Buchanan, a successful coal merchant from Detroit, decided during the Depression to help boys to get out of town and see Alaska. Every summer from 1923 through the Depression, he and 50 or 60 boys journeyed to Skagway and spent several weeks touring Alaska, climbing glaciers and panning for gold. The dangers of the construction work is commemorated by a simple cross along the railway line. As a result of blast done on August 3, 1898, a huge slab of rock slid over two men, killing them instantly. The company decided to use the rock itself as a memorial, as it would be too dangerous and too costly to try to recover the bodies. The White Pass at Yukon Route climbs from sea level in Skagway to almost 3,000 feet at the summit in just 20 miles and features steep grades of almost 4%. The tight curves of the White Pass called for a narrow gauge railroad. The rails were 3 feet apart on a 10 foot wide roadbed and that meant lower construction costs. On the day, we did not enjoy clear skies and rose upwards into cloud. However, to show what you can see on a clear day, I have included photos taken by a friend, Corinne Moore, who did the trip with her husband, Kevin, in 2006. Prospectors of 1898 were not allowed across the border by the Canadian authorities 
unless they had a full tonne of supplies with them. For most, this meant several trips up and down the passes using pack horses to carry their loads before entry to Canada could be obtained. The $10 million project from Skagway to Whitehorse was the product of British financing, American engineering and Canadian contract. 35,000 men and 450 tonnes of explosives overcame a harsh and challenging set of conditions to create the railway built of gold. Early in 1898, the local crime boss, Sophie Smith, and his gang used extortion to impede the progress of construction. Sophie was killed in a shootout in Juneau in July 1898, and his gang captured him. He now resides in the cemetery just outside Skagway, complete with a picket fence. Hi, but thank you for riding today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Over the last century, the line served the development of several mining companies, which it does today, and lead zinc ore as a major export through the port of Skagway. And then, of course, there is tourism. 